Um, so I'm going to read what we read the other day. I don't think many, many of you were there. Let me see. I have to find it. All right, well, actually, let's just start here. Well, welcome again. I'm just gonna read something out of a uh, a book someone gave me. So this is a statement from Hoang Po. Hoang Po was a, a Chinese Zen master. I think in the 1200s. One of the things I really like about him is one of the people that followed him or was with him was the scribe for the emperor's court. So what Hoang Po said that day or that night was sort of written down the next day, not like 300 years later. Yeah, so it's pretty good. So the one mind alone is the Buddha, the big M, one mind alone is the Buddha. And there is no distinction between the Buddha and sentient things, but that sentient beings are attached to forms and so seek externally for Buddhahood. By their very seeking, they lose it, for that is using the Buddha to seek the Buddha and using mind to grasp mind. That's pretty much the spirit of the message. Yeah, that sort of grabbed me. I mean, the things that grabbed me the most in a way was just that, the idea that we're using what we are to look for what we think we are, yeah? And the emphasis is on think we are. So we're looking for what we actually are uh, to uh, to look for what we think we are. So I think that's... He says that quite beautifully. He's the one that said, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use mind to seek mind. You can't use light to seek light, which I feel infers that you are Buddha, light, mind. Yeah? I just don't see how there could be any crooked pointing in that statement. It's pretty direct, I feel. So, of course, we have a sense of being Paul, and that sense of being Paul uh, is totally okay unless it's the only thing going on. If it's the only thing that seemingly is going on, it can be an incredible obstruction. If it's going on and you see it's going on, it loses its, its ability to obstruct. You, hear, you see? This isn't about getting rid of it. It's about seeing it. Yeah. And then there's just a loss of interest in it. It's like you know, the emphasis on a, on a small thing, and then if you lift it up, you would see a whole lot more around that small thing. What you would see around that small thing wouldn't vanquish and kill the small thing. The small thing would be included in it. But when we're looking at everything from the small thing, it's very uh, exclusive, yes? It doesn't include a lot of possibilities. So, and here we go, uh, one hit, two hits, three hits of revelations of what you're not. Yeah, that's the mind, light Buddha. To me, it's like, you know, some of us, you got to get knocked out three times, obviously, you know, then, then you may scream, no mas, yeah, can't take it anymore. Uh one hit, two hit, three hits of revelations of what we're not. Allow us to see, even in an event of selflessness, the arising of claiming it to imply a one who is selfless. Yes? So when you're virtuous and kind, as we say in recovery, there's still, there's still a self-will or a self-seeking in that. Yeah? Because there's a claiming of the virtuous and kind to infer that you're a virtuous and kind person. And then you're going to be disappointed when you demonstrate you're not a virtuous and kind person. And you're going to be very confused because you had a story that you were virtuous and kind, and then you do an unvirtuous, unkind thing. Yeah, this is the bondage of the whole. So 
if you adhere to one, you're going to get sort of stuck on the other. It just doesn't. Yeah. So seeing the claiming, not as the claimed, but as what's seeing and not claiming to be the seer is the experience of the horse in front of the cart. So I'll say this again. One hit, two hits, three hits of revelations of what we're not allow us to see, even in an event of selflessness, the arising of claiming. I humbly believe as long as there's a conscious contact, there's going to be a claiming uh, of that conscious contact. It's going to claim the consciousness to be us and then claim the contact to be something else. So it's a dualistic claiming, yes? It not only claims the seer, it, it claims in a sense that there's a scene, which should be suspect in itself also. Yeah. So the seer and the scene get claimed. And it's mechanical. I really want to stress this because I have, you know, I've sat here many times and we've shared it. And I can see how the head claims it on a subtle level. And now you think you're doing the selfing. Yeah. You did, you're not doing the selfing. Yeah. So let's see. Consciousness, does it demonstrate any effort or thought? No, I don't see consciousness breaking a sweat and saying, I'm exhausted from being consciousness. How can we believe that through thought and effort we could achieve that which demonstrates no thought or effort? Hmm. What's looking right now, no matter what your opinion is or anyone else's opinion of that which is looking, is what's looking, is what you are looking for. If the you is emphasized, then it leads to a you looking for what's looking. What's looking, looking for what's looking, sounds crazy to me. Yeah. So, they're seeing the head takes the seeing and makes a, a dualistic seer scene, yeah? And the whole point of non-duality is the negation of duality. So it's, it's negating this uh, machination or this mechanical working and questioning the product that it assures us that it's true. The questioning, the subject object of seeing, which is seer seeing, yes? Hearing, which is hear or heard, feeling, which is feeler felt. Feeler felt, yes. So the feeler is an object that thinks it's the subject, and the seen or the felt is the object. It's a feeling, or it's a or it's a person, or it's the wind blowing, yes. So this is the negation. That's all. What is it negating? It's not negating the seeing or the hearing, feeling, tasting, touching. It's negating the veracity of the interpretation of the mental state into see or seen, hearing, heard, feeling, felt. That's all. All it is. Yeah. And then you can go on experiencing verbing uh, and you'll be unfettered by the noun. That's all. Yeah. And it's not going to change what verbing is going to go on, but you'll travel lighter through the world of verbing as a verb, obviously. <laughs> It's sort of like an alien coming into an atmosphere. They need a whole lot of gear to fucking survive the atmosphere. Yeah, so the atmosphere of verbing really isn't suited for a noun. It just doesn't work well. The noun, uh, as soon as the noun is, is in the midst of verbing, it gives direction to the verbing and it thinks the verbing is coming at it or doing something personally. It really, really distorts the whole interpretation. So, uh, and if you look into verbing, there's never a noun to be found. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's like uh, the noun, it's sort of like you see it, but there's all this bumping and everything inside, which is the selfing. The selfing is an activity, just like every other activity, verbing. But the selfing somehow leads the audience to take itself to be a noun. Does the selfing do it? No, we do it, really. 
I mean, we're reality. The only thing that could fool reality is reality. There's nothing else that could. Yeah. You're not going to be hoodwinked by an incredible uh, illusion. Yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. So. It's a simple message. We've been pounding away at it for freaking years. It's amazing. Uh, sometimes I feel like it's pretty clear what's being said. And then someone talks to me and it's like, what happened to that cod? They put fake fins on it. They call it shark. They're afraid of running into it in the water. There's, it's just amazing. I don't know. I, I've tried the best I could possibly be and, and as clear as I possibly can. I mean, I would dissect the syllables and to realize that a word can be changed without changing the word. One of them is the feeling of my before it, but also emphasizing one syllable over another syllable. And this is what the head does. You can, you could, uh, you can sell the person the cod, but they've emphasized the D or the C and they miss the O. Yeah. So it's sort of like you got to keep coming back and you got to be like an eye and an ear doctor to check out how things are going. Yeah. <laughs> because. <laughs> That's how religions happen, really. <laughs> The person who uttered the message somehow gets disjointed, one now crucified or something. And then there's a field day in interpreting it. And then look at what we get, <laughs> seemingly. Uh, <laughs> uh, so let me read this thing again, if I can find it. I thought, what was that? All right, from Huang Po. The one M, big M, mind, let's call it awareness. You know, in early Zen, they like to call it mind, big M, mind, in all the translations, pretty much. So the one awareness alone is the Buddha. That's understandable, yeah? The one awareness alone is the Buddha. Now, obviously, when we hear the word Buddha, <laughs> Lots of things happen. You know, it's even funny. Even in the statuary of Buddha, a lot of people call the, the happy monk who's doing Qigong Buddha. Yeah, this is how insane it is. Or Kuan Yin as Buddha in drag or something. Yes. Well, in a sense, that's true. But, you know, they talk, they see the monk the happy monk as Buddha. No, and you go, no, that's really not the Buddha. <laughs> the Buddha was, you know, whatever. <laughs> so here, the one mind alone is the Buddha, and there is no distinction between the Buddha and sentient things. Don't, would we be what was called a sentient thing? Yeah. You have to say this is a thing, yeah? This, this thing here, this is thing, right? Yes, sentient, conscious, or two levels above a coconut, some level. There's a sense of <laughs> we're like maybe a little more advanced than an amoeba. We can feel something, stuff like that. So there, and this is, you know, who knows what, who, I just well, like Huang Po. I like how he delivers everything. So, and there is no distinction between the Buddha and sentient things. Well, there sure seems to be one we're seemingly living as, Paul and Buddha. <laughs> yeah, that seems like it's a distinction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 you know, I'm accepting the fact there's a Buddha, but I'm not lose, losing the sense of Paul. Yeah, it's going to be Paul and the Buddha, not just the Buddha, Paul and the Buddha. Or why have I, why have I been, have I been looking for the Buddha all these years? <laughs> so there is a distinction. I beg to differ with you, Oankpo. There's a huge distinction that's causing me to seek 
What I believe, I don't seem to have that I believe Buddha has. And so I'd like to have a little Buddha nature to mix with the Paul nature to get a better Paul nature. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. But here's the distinction. There is no distinction, but then there is one. Yeah. So truly there is no distinction before the time and the dreaming starts. Yeah. In there, there's no distinction between the sentient things and Buddha. Yeah. But then he goes, and there is no distinction. And then, but that sentient being, so the but comes in, but that sentient be beings are attached to forms. Oh, all right. Does it say anything about forms really? No, it's, there's an attachment to forms. And the attachment to forms isn't causing the forms to have a huge influence on us. It's affecting us in the attachment to forms, yeah? We're like the, the purveyor or the producer of any effects. The forms are inherently empty, but we are giving them meaning and those meanings seem to be affecting us as what? As a form, yeah? So, okay. I can't see lights going, so. But that sentient beings are attached to forms and so seek, this is beautiful, really. And because they're attached to forms, meaning let's say this one right here. <laughs> and this one really wants to get it, wants to get no thing. Wants to meet the Buddha, yeah, yeah. But that sentient beings are attached to forms and so seek externally for Buddhahood. Buddhahood. Okay, so just like Ramana says about uh, free will and predetermination, or is there predetermination that has free will in it? Yeah, so the look of free will, but it's predetermined anyway. He goes, listen, I'm going to answer the question. If there's a sense of individuality, yeah. How do you get a sense of individuality if you're not an ind individual? If you're not an individual, the sense of individuality is produced, yes? So there's a thing that there's a certain interest and attention in, and that pro produces a sense of individuality. I mean, when we look in the mirror, only in horror movies will there be another face in there. Usually it's you, yeah? <laughs> so, sentient beings are attached to forms and so seek externally for Buddhahood. That's it. He says, this is it, yeah? By their very seeking, they lose it. For that is using the Buddha to seek for the Buddha and using mind to grasp mind. All right. So if there's a attachment to this idea of being Paul and, and attached to forms, that condition is going to bring about a, an ignorant move. The next move is going to be ignorant because it's based on this attachment to form, yeah? You are now most probably going to look externally for the Buddha or the Buddhahood, yes? Not, and in that searching for it externally, there's a denial of your own nature, yes? That's what he's explaining. He says, you can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. When you're using the Buddhahood to look for the Buddhahood externally, that's exactly what we're doing. This is the beauty of, of the message of non-duality because it just stops you in your tracks. When you put a shoe on in the spiritual shop of non-duality, you don't take another step usually. You're, you're just fucking frozen with those shoes and some downloads occur. You don't get busy walking because then you would, there would be the attachment to form as the walker. 
you put the shoes on, but you don't get up and walk. You just sit with them. And it's very fucking disarming. It is because a lot of stuff downloads and you, because you have tons of evidence just waiting to be given an another meaning. And I believe these statements give it another meaning. And the whole closet where they're all stored, it's like an avalanche. It all just falls on the seeming you. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. And hopefully after a few avalanches, you won't try to get up. Yeah. Just fucking just lay there. <laughs> and you'll be disarmed, really, truly. And I don't mean disarmed like I've got to take a break for an hour today. I mean disarmed concerning a huge amount of seeking. Yeah. A huge amount of it. Yeah. Things that were very important. And then they broke into other important things. And all this seeking was just spreading and going. Yeah. It suddenly goes back. And that presence you are seeking is actually the perfume you put out. The I am is not Paul. The I am is what you are. So it's, instead of calling it the presence of Paul, which I want to get out of in most cases, once you take the Paul off of it, that's, that's where you abide, is in that presence, that ordinary dog shit awareness presence of onness, yeah? Onness, not taking itself to be form, onness taking itself to be form. It doesn't freaking matter because the onness is there, form or no form, yeah? And so the relevance that we give the head is that if we don't do it, it's going to completely fool us. No, you can have it going on and be quite clear it's not about you, yeah? You better because it's going to keep going on. Yeah. It is because it's not of your, it's not under your volition. It's mechanical. It triggers when consciousness is in contact, the mental state arises and claims the contact and bends it into its narration, which is forget the seeing, let's emphasize the seer and seeing. Literally, yes, yes or no, yes. Yeah. And you're hoping that one day it's going to stop. No, that's it's mechanical. It takes it and bends it like this. This things like this. It bends it like this. So go er, instead of er. This would be the verbing. This is oh, this is something else. It makes like a little loop. And then we're there. The scene happens, but we're so used to the see or scene. It's not like the seeing isn't happening. There's just not much attention to it. It's like the last place we want to look. We want to read more books about Buddha instead of feeling the one who's reading the books about. There's not a one, but the feeling of, the, of what is reading the books. Yeah, Truly, the real value is right where we're sitting, but we're busily looking for value. That's easily correctable, isn't it? I would think so. What is it asking of you? Nothing. It's just say, what would happen if you lost interest in the seer? Yeah, Because I feel there's a trinity. There's the seeing is not the most powerful thing. It's the seer. Because you see, you see a lot of things, but the seer is always the same seer. Yeah. It keeps building this idea of being the seer through all the steam. Yeah. So if you lose interest in the, the idea of the seer, you're going to gain interest in the seeing, yes? And you're going to be reintroduced to your own nature, which is verbing, not a noun, yeah? And when you get described as we are giving everything all the meaning it has, it sounds more intimate than I was born in San Francisco, uh, Rockville Center, Long Island, and went to St. Agnes Catholic School. It doesn't feel like I'm a noun, like a bulletin born with history taped on me. Yeah, It feels like this thinking, hearing, tasting, touching, smelling, feeling, all this going on. And I don't see a beginning of it, and I don't see an end of it. I don't. But I see 
the beginning of the narration, and there's a lot of ends of it all day. If you do something that you really like, you're going to lose interest in the reinforcement of self. You are. Yeah. And for a while, you're going to feel incredible. But when you get up or you come out of the water after you caught that wave, it's, you're going to be saddled with, oh, man, I hope someone saw me catch that wave and the whole fucking thing. You're now the surfer instead of really the act of surfing. And it's the act of surfing that's bringing great joy to the surfer. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so excited about it because it's live. It's animating me all the time. No matter where I do a Zoom, it's the same. Uh, the where I do a Zoom or the wh where I go to speak has nothing to do with it. Yeah. It's just. If I shared it like a scientific formula, no. The emphasis, I, I live the emphasis of noun way over all the verbing. I feel like I remember it, and it sort of sucked. Yeah? And even when it didn't suck, I had a feeling it was going to suck. Yeah? So because of time. Time is insane. Yeah? And then... I don't know what happened. I went to places and I heard things. And then uh, there was just collapse, coll a collapse, or just really the emperor, seeing the emperor with no clothes. And then suddenly I could see the emperor had no clothes when it was appearing with clothes. It was great. Yeah. Just like that story I tell about seeing my mother in a very awkward position and seeing her private parts when I was 11 or 12. And that after for months and even years, when I saw my mother wearing a lot of winter clothing, I saw Sora with no clothes on and it in an image in my head. I couldn't burn it out of there. So in a similar way, this is like what the message is. It's just uh, every time I see the head, I know I'm not that. <laughs> and all you do is see the head. That's it. Yeah. The seeing is what we are, but the event here is you see, you're seeing the head mostly. You're seeing the manufacturing of the dreaming. Yeah. And if your first step is from the point that you are that, then I humbly believe you're going to be looking from that perch. Yeah. This is about seeing you're not on that perch. That's all. You will keep appearing on the perch, but now there's 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 been a convincing that you're not that appearance. That's all. Just like, you know, I was never going to buy that rug because I didn't have a floor in that. I didn't have a house. I had nowhere to live. So there's no, you could have tempted me for four months with Oriental rugs. I was not going to buy one because I had no use for it. The same thing. You lose interest in all the advertising up there, and you just go about living a day at a time. No parades are going to erupt because you're here. Yeah, so I'm happy to be here. Hope, welcome. I saw Esther and other people live, and Mia. And, yes. Mm. Do you see that there's a false seriousness? That's not serving you. He just explained it. Yeah. You're believing that your form causes your search for what you are, which would take no time at all to find it because you've never left to become external. So you're looking, you're using external methodology to find the Buddha all the while being the Buddha itself. That's the, that's the, inside joke of non-duality it just keeps getting interpreted in different ways but that's it yeah so do you do you not or i don't care about believing it but it's pretty clear he's saying there's no distinction at all unless <laughs> that which has no distinction thinks there's a distinction so 
we're not con trying to convince Paul. We're hopefully hearing the message as Buddha, yeah? And when the Buddha hears, you can't use yourself to find yourself, he will get it. When Paul keeps hearing it, he's like a dog with the crooking of the neck. What? 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 Yeah, so thanks, Mike. Anyone wants to share? Bring them on. Excuse me, I've got, I forgot to have a sleep apnea test, so I am <laughs> having to do that. I'm supposed to have done it by 10. Um, so a sleep me. apnea test? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know why they started at 10 o'clock, because I don't go to bed by 10 o'clock. But, um, but John has his hand up. Oh, thank Great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, someone, hold on, John, for a second. Hey, Mike, ask uh, someone if to help you with the uh, hosting if you don't want. You don't need to. Um, yeah. Um, any carry or? Thing, yeah, carry. I can help. Hey, the thing is, Mike, I did those tests. I did those tests. You're fine. They just, you put it on, it ain't going to really start, you know, it's going to know when you sleep. So, if unless you want to go to bed right now, yeah. No, but he said that not even a, if I hadn't gone to bed, to go ahead and put it on. So yeah, yeah, you know, you can just wear it and just be yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, I just, but I was supposed to do it at ten o'clock, so <laughs> which is a half yeah, hour. Ago. You're good. Okay. Thank we'll you. Some people don't fall asleep for hours. Kerry will. Kerry will take the baton. Yeah. I got I'm, this. I'm making a host. All right. All great. right, bro. Yeah. Host. Okay. All right. There you go. Speak, John. No, let John All speak. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Oh man, I, I can't hope you pass that be... test, Mike. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's Fine serious. Color. Sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is a thing. That's. I know it is. Yeah, they have to rule it out. Years. I sold those. I sold CPAPs in Minneapolis. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the thing, and then. That's serious. <laughs> yeah. You, you Pay attention. Go no. All right, go, John. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I just wanted to share because. Um, <laughs> so I had a, I remember a couple of weeks ago, I said something about, oh, everything's so good. I'm traveling lighter, but, and you were like, I hate that word. And I've listened to a bunch of talks now where you talk to people about not pledging allegiance to the butt and stuff. And um, I've, I feel like recently things have kind of flipped around where like, I, am having the experience of whatever, like just the regular stuff that the head does of, you know, I'm thinking about how, oh man, this thing that's coming up in an hour is going to suck, or I'm tired, or I'm hungry, or I've got a headache, or I don't want to do this or that, and that shit will be going on, um, but I am <laughs> there, I am is there, like, yes. I, I still am also, like, present and aware and yeah. it it's not like that stuff doesn't have the same weight that it did um and i mean i honestly there's been so many examples of that is so much of that recently that it's really amazing um but i had a really recently like just two two three days ago i had a, a very specific example of I had something big happen and I won't go into too many details, but basically my housing situation is going to change. I've been staying at the same place for a while. And um, the reason I've stayed, even though there's some stuff about it, I don't dig is the fact that it's just super cheap. And like with my financial situation, like housing here up in Maine is just the prices are crazy. So we've debated leaving numerous times because our landlord is kind of toxic and there's stuff <laughs> going on with the house, but we just stayed because we were afraid we couldn't afford anything else. Well, recently I talked to, so it's actually four brothers on the place. I talked to one of the brothers and I was talking about next year's lease. And he said, well, actually we haven't decided if you're staying next year. And I was like, Oh shit, my lease ends in September. And as soon as he said that to me, I thought, okay, I have to start looking for a new place because I know what's happening. I know they're not going to let us stay. And there was, you know, a few hours of like being really fucked up and panicking and everything else. But still like subtly, I was like, I was okay, you know? Um, 
And I was at, I, you know, I talked to my wife about it and I was talking to her. I was talking to my landlord and then all of a sudden I'm at work. So I'm driving around, I'm doing my thing and I'm in somebody's garden and I see these tiny little, the tiny little flies that have these like conical abdomens and they're just, they look like jewels. They're like green and gold. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, all of the shit that was going on in my head just disappeared for a little bit. And I was just totally present. And I know I'm always present. I do really, I get that now. I feel that, but I zoomed out and I was just right there. And I also, I saw a white bee I'd never seen before. It just, but I was just really there. And then it was really clear to me that like, whatever was happening was going to happen, you know? And I, Mm. I was going to go, there was going to, stuff was going to happen. I was going to go through the motions I went through and, uh, you know, it was amazing. It was like all of a sudden, all the panic of it and everything just kind of drained away. And I was like, I don't know what the hell is going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to find a new place. If I'm going to have to go back to Pennsylvania, live with my parents, wind up in, in a box. I realized that like, realistically, I don't have any fucking clue what's going to happen it's just a process trying to like whatever protect my body from whatever like i don't know what whatever you however you want to describe it and it was okay and honestly what's really amazing is you know we we reached out to some people we know we put the word out and all of a sudden you know me and my wife spent the last year and a half hemming and hawing trying to find places that we could possibly afford and all it took was us reaching out to people. And now we're getting flooded with people being like, oh, I've got this place. I've got that place. And some of them, whatever, aren't going to fit. But like, we're going to look at places that we can actually afford. And all it took was, you know, the my head, our heads, our, our ideas of what could and couldn't work kept us from doing this until finally some shit just happened and we we're forced into it. And so... I don't know. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. And I'm super grateful for the fact that like, I'm grateful for the message. I'm grateful for the fact that like something I've read about and tried to understand for years, I finally stopped trying to understand it. And I just feel something. And so I'm really grateful. And I'm grateful, Paul, to you for just showing up and, and delivering it. Uh, and I'm grateful to everybody else here who who shares and, and listens and everything else. So thank you so much. Hey, John, just honor that demonstration also. You yeah. just did by sharing it. But really, yeah, because the heads loves to uh, forget miracles in a half an hour and, and you know, dwell on I'm, a seeming resentment for 50 years <laughs> i'm i'm trying to put gold leaf on the temple of this thing because it's beautiful yeah it's beautiful yeah and i and i honestly the the thing i i have been there is like i mentioned the the toxic landlord i there is a lot of resentment there and i'm trying to not surrender to that you know i want to yeah. you know but as an action you. figure you know as the action figure there's things to do about that and in, in recovery, we're introduced because in recovery, uh, a conclusion people who had suffered from this disease of mind and body was that resentment was the number one offender for uh, alcoholics. They resent yeah. kill more alcoholics than anything else. And so we don't have the luxury to entertain justified anger or shit like that because it can right. kill us. Yeah. So, <laughs> There's a simple four column thing you can do to write down, you know, like the landlord, uh, you know, just one example of why he's toxic, what kind of how it's affecting the agenda for you and your family, you know, your instinctual yeah. domicile, all that. And then to see your role in things and then really see self's role in things or the this this machination that goes on. Yeah. And it's pretty yeah. helpful because uh, what kills a lot of people that I've known is they can't see their role in things. And if they can't see their own things, they can't see the mental role in things. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. We, yeah. 
when you say so, my role in things, are you talking about like the my interpretation of things or actual actions I've taken? Whatever, it could be actions, but also see a resentment that happened or is held has a history maybe, but also how the head's using it now. Yeah. And that's really the intriguing part because you may have a story that you do anything to get out of these uh, resentments, but if you go to the inner circle of the head, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's worshiping there. It, it res- <laughs> It is one of those votive candles that keeps lighting <laughs> us. It's, uh, it's very, yeah, yeah, I swear. It's pretty. No, I know. How makes, opposite the effect could be that you think. So, no, it makes sense because honestly, I've been, I've, man, I tell you, this is one particular relationship I have where I've prayed over and over again to be able to forget because, you know, I did so there's like I said, there's four brothers, okay, who own this place. I've only ever met two of them, and the one lives on the same property as us half the year, like during the warm months. And he's very he's uh, he, he's an unrecovered alcoholic who's very aggressive and yeah. just whatever. I don't I'm, he's yes. made he's he's crossed a lot of boundaries with me and my family, and so. I finally had to go to his other brothers and be like, listen, you guys have no idea what's going on here. And for me, having been whatever, I know this is my my narrative about myself. I've let myself be pushed around a lot in my life. And so yeah. yes. that little that little bit of standing up for myself and defending my family, particularly, was really more about my wife and my kids than anything else was very liberate was felt very good maybe liberating is a strong word it felt good but the problem is that now it's gone to the point where i feel like really what's going on is i'm now really proud of the fact that i put him in his place and stuff and i don't like that i don't like the fact that i've got and i know it's not me but still it's in there and i don't like that about the way i feel about this person i don't want to i don't want to have that attitude towards a person i don't want to be domineering you know yeah, but let's on a, another level, you can see, like before, uh, let's say I robbed a deli, delicatessen. Okay. Pull the beer out of the back, yes? Yeah. And then I get caught. And then they send me to like one of those farms where you're doing a lot of work outside in the garden and stuff like that. And then people are riding horses or something who are watching over you. Yeah. Yeah. And then some guy would be bothering me quite a lot with me not doing anything. Yeah. When I looked at it with this principle, well, what did I do to get me in that position to be spit on by a guy on a horse in a fucking juvenile farm thing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I robbed that deli. Yeah. Right. So I saw my role in things which may put it in a whole new light. Yeah. So this is more of a principle. Yeah. yeah because if you start seeing your own role in things, you're going to see really the, what we would call in recovery, the self's role or what we would call the mental activities role in things, which is quite huge. Yes. Yeah. Because a lot's going on that we really have nothing to do with. We get tagged with it. Yeah. And which also burdens us because what grows taking yourself to be a doer is guilt and shame about what you did and didn't do. So the bondage uh, is constantly reinforcing itself because of the ignorance of basically taking ourselves to be form and that attachment to it, calling it Paul. Yeah. So if you see your role in things, you're going to see what we're talking about here's role in things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's going to change. So when you talk, it's not going to be, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. There's something's doing this, something's doing that. (laughs) I'm going to just hesitate to call it me right now because I Uh don't, I'm starting not to believe that's me that's being talked about. Yeah. And then really, uh, uh, the emphasis on the whole way we see things will change. Yeah. And what gets highlighted, emphasized a lot uh, is the self-centered programming. Yeah. 
then suddenly something else is downloading and something else is being emphasized and you say the same thing but you get a different meaning out of it it's great yeah yeah and it may fit better it's like you know having a pair of glasses and the idea i did this all the time all of us do it we are afraid of certain things so we put up with a lot yeah yeah because we're afraid we're not going to be taken care of this is one of the greatest uh let's say uh you know, cattle prods that the head uses. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Stay around because you think you're not going to get anything better. And you, and then there's just got to constantly, and then of course, passive aggressiveness goes, and then you're yapping about this other person, but you can yeah. leave. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, the whole thing, there's principles all over it. It's like, uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. So thanks, John. Thank you. No, all thank right. you very much. All right, Carrie. See, when you see one thing, you actually see a lot of things. Because there's a, it's like in, in the mental uh, event, there's thousands of dances, but they have the same steps. Yes. So one's called cha-cha-cha, one's called the waltz. But if you really look at the feet, they're the same fucking steps. Yes. They're just given different names. So if you're not getting fooled by all the movements of the arms and, and this and that, if you just look at the feet, you'll see exactly what's going on in a sense. Yeah, you will because you're before it all. You're awareness. Yeah. So you, you can be a master of awareness of things because you're not a thing and you're aware. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So thank you. All right, Kerry. I like the alb albino bee. I like that. I that's still have. That's going to be the next. We're going to give up Zen bitch slap, and it's going to be the albino bees. <laughs> it's like it's kind of like the great white buffalo. We have uh, Steve. Yes, Moby Dick. Yes, I like. <laughs> Johnny Winter, Edgar Winter, Edgar, Edgar, Edgar. albinos <laughs> all the way. <laughs> Frankenstein, all right. Steve's yeah. up. Uh, all right, anyone else, Kerry? Steve, San Diego, Steve. Oh, there San Diego, are. Steve. All right. So, um, hey, Paul, I just had something odd happen today, and um, anyway, so. I take the same route basically half the time I go home and there's metered uh, a metered on ramp there. And sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off and I'm always paying attention. Well, today I blew right through it without thinking about it. And of course, today's the day there's a highway patrol guy there. And so I pull over and, you know, I'm just like, gee, I don't know. I did that. I, if I did, I, you know, I really messed up. And that was like how I was talking with the guy. Meanwhile, adrenaline's gone. I we just lost you. Hey, Steve, I'm back. Steve, you moved. I'm back. You're back. Yeah, yeah I I hit the mute key on my computer. So anyway, um, and he was just very kind. He's talking about it, and it was just this conversation where I was just feeling like, gee, if I did it, I really fucked up, and blah 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 blah. And I'm just talking, and um. And I think, okay, well, I'm going to have to deal with, you know, traffic school and a ticket because I haven't had a ticket in like 10 years or more. And lo and behold, he goes out and comes back like a minute later and gives me a warning. And it's like, where the heck did that come from? Because I think I had last time I had a warning was 40 years ago, you know. And so uh, lots of gratitude, but I don't have any perspective on this whole thing. I'm supposed to look at it like, hey, maybe the world is operating in my favor. You know, I don't know what, like, it's. I want to create a story around it, but I really don't know what to say about it. The head, just let, you're not going to do it anyway. The head can make it what it is and just wear it loosely. Yeah. Enjoy so, the show. Give it yeah. some artistic freedom. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of having it enslave you, it can sort of enrich your day with comedy or seeing things in a, wouldn't you love to, if you're, in, if you're an action figure, wouldn't you love to feel like you're in good hands all the time and that something is doing for you? What all, in all those honeycombs in the head, 
there's a belief echoing that you're not able to do much, that something is doing for you what you can't do for yourself. That, yeah, that's exactly pretty fucking cool so it, yeah it's really cool i've had multiple people say act as if this world's taking care of you and it's like how that's can right. i not I how can i not see yeah. it that way why I not mean, yeah i mean what's the alternative fuck yeah. <laughs> i've lived in the drained out life a drained out life you don't see any Un, you know, people are seeing the unseen hands of conspiracies galore. And it's nice to see the unseen hand of the Holy Spirit or something. <laughs> I mean, seriously, the head's going to yeah. do something. It's a magician. It wants to do a magic trick. Give it something, you know, give it a, a, a bouquet of roses and let it do something with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. the head wants to look at, gee, did I really just drive that whole area like I was spaced out? And it's like, like why pay I attention know the to head's going to do that the head's yeah. beyond training so fuck that you know just uh yeah. just just see it's not you i swear to god just, <laughs> just the action you know, figure decided to take an adventure okay it was funny with the nature of amelia and i we attempted to bring our dog when it was young to like uh training <laughs> it was pointless because we weren't into it the dog wasn't into it. It was just ridiculous. So finally, we stopped all that. Let time take its effect. The dog is getting it's weight, gaining weight. We call it Gertha now. It's fucking chilling out on its own. It was no way. Yeah, so the best way to look at the head is not from the head, first of all. And then I've this experience is a comedic it's given a comedic shine. So it, to me, that works. It keeps me, it keeps me laughing throughout the day. Yeah. If you lose something, who stole it? <laughs> it's so fast. You think you're going to just get before that? It's a, you, you're not, you don't get before it in time. You are before it out of time. That's the point of the message. You're not going to outdraw that gunslinger. The process of <laughs> selfing, claiming things is so fast, I don't believe any process can beat it, really. Because it always has you as the one who's doing the process. <laughs> so it, obviously, it's shot first. <laughs> so it blows, it shoots the balloon of meditation, and it uses meditation to bond you to the idea of being the meditator. It shoots, it shot, fucking deflates all these things you had so much hope for. Yeah. <laughs> but when in that and there is a pause or a timeless or space, that gunslinger in there always has the gun out. It can't lose. Yeah. It can't be outdrawn because it's not drawing the gun out. It's it has the gun out all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your head, seriously. First thing. Are uh, you missing something? I know she stole it or something like this. It's just like, you know, it's what well, you, you go for three weeks on a retreat. You're every, no one's stealing shit. Everything is great. It's like hermetically sealed. It's beautiful, great vegan, raw food, whatever. And as soon as you leave, you know, an hour or two later, something happens. They're, they're out to get me. It's just, it's not going to, that thing can stay in for years. I was in a program for two fucking years, which subdued seemingly the act of drive to, to escape, which was getting loaded and shit, yeah? As soon as I left those conditions, the thing had just been waiting in the weeds. It was just twiddling its thumbs because it knew I couldn't live in Delancey Street the rest of my life, probably. So it was just waiting when situation <laughs> changed, which it did, which mostly it will. And there it was. The two years didn't have any effect on it. It was just waiting. Yeah. So, I, I sort of have. Go ahead. Yeah, that's all. So let I sort of have. The, yeah. I had the reverse experience happen on a Vipassana retreat. You know, the guy sit on one side, the women sit on the other. 
And every time I saw a woman look in my direction, I started, my mind started having fantasies about all that stuff, you know? Sure. And then the 10th tenth, the tenth day, you could start talking and interacting. And the 10th day, every single woman went to their husband or boyfriend. And I laughed so hard at myself. It was just like, that's what the mind does. You know what? There was a German movie. I think it was called uh, Samadhi or something. And it's, it's set in Tibet. And I'm not, you know, blaspheming anything. It's from this movie. It was set in Tibet. And it's, there's these young monks going to this cave where another monk has been sitting for two years, two months, two days, yeah, in silent meditation. So they go there to get him. And they're in awe, you know, they have so much free respect for the guy. And they're, you know, they're like, oh, oh, and they, you know, he's pretty arthritic. You know, they're opening his elbows and his knees and they're taking him back. And one of the one of the young monks has the great joy of sleeping in the same room with this guy. Yeah. And so the young monk gets up and he looks at the guy and the blanket has one of the, you know, like the triangle. <laughs> the he's having he has an erection the guy from the two years and two two years and two months he's got a big boner he's having like a wet dream it totally deflated the early the young monk because he believed you know oh he's must been awashed from all these things <laughs> first night out he gets a boner <laughs> it was incredible it was a great symbol of it yeah so yeah Good luck trying to get yeah, before. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You are before that. This is the problem. What's what's claimed to be talking is after it. That's why it can't get before it. That's why it doesn't see the, the movement of they stole it because it's after. You're before. The awareness is before everything. Nothing is before the awareness. Yeah. It, it reveals the afterhood of what you think is the alpha and the omega. The afterhood is it gets fucking surprised constantly. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that was coming. Yeah. Because the way you're so after the fact, you're pretty much out to lunch. Awareness is there. Seeing everything. Yes. Nothing seeing awareness. Nothing is seeing awareness. You have an intimacy of it. You have a feeling that you're in it, but you don't, oh, I met awareness today. You don't meet awareness and you're not going to be a purveyor of that's pure awareness, that's radical awareness, that's extreme awareness. You don't have a fucking idea what it is. So just stick with the dog shit awareness. Seriously. Yes. So yeah, you had a great, a lucky day. That's fantastic. You know how many times that never happened to me? Every time I got pulled over, I went to jail. Fuck. They would stay in the cop car for like 30 minutes. I didn't know I, they had a, that huge of a biography. And then I'd always hear the fateful sentence, Mr. Hedeman, will you please step out of the car? I was going to jail. Give me a fucking warning. No. No. <laughs> and yet now I see there was great value in all that. Why? Yeah. Because there was an awareness of it. Yeah. How terrible it was or how great it was. The greatest value is there was awareness. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm happy to hear that. Hey, it's nice not to get a ticket and go to fucking uh, driver school, whatever it is, traffic school. That's great. You dodged a bullet. All right, Kerry. All right. <clears throat> Bruce, I can't see you, but I see your hand. There you are. All right. It's been a while, everyone. How are you all doing? I've been following somewhat. Oh, yeah, it's been a while, probably <clears throat> three weeks or so. About four weeks ago, I started like uh, spring cleaning. Um, and then <clears throat> about three weeks ago, when you were going to head out this way, I'd start, you know, got on my hands and knees to do the kitchen floor. 
and then very stressful sense. And then there was a swelling and I was pretty much incapacitated. Um, and, you know, I started um, identifying, uh, you know, with what some others go through. And then, there, but, uh, you know, there was a slowing down. Anyway, um, now it's like, okay, the other leg's got to walk like that leg's walking, you know, like an old person, you know, stepping about three inches. But no, it's it, uh, in a sense, I feel like uh, being out in the desert and all these thoughts, you know, they, the appearance of them, but it's like, it's like bringing out the comedy. Um, like I'm the butt of the joke. Um, mm. In the in the desert, in the sense, uh, like being the awareness in the, in the dreamland, and you know these, and like the pounding, say, of Father's Day, and I don't celebrate holidays, etc., and the feelings and thoughts that might, you know, from the past that have been, you know, and they just keep, you know, but there's a, the value, like it's not like something to get rid of or be not. It's all I don't know somehow. Uh, you know, like a midsummer's night, a midsummer night's dream, you know. Um, it's nice to have a share in that perspective. Um, the reinforcement that comes from sharing with others, you know. Um, it's, you know, it's beautiful in that sense. Um, and I didn't like, I got triggered. Um, and yeah, all the, I couldn't even stand on my feet, so to speak. But there was an, there was an awareness that, um, of some whatever, uh, um, which enable, you know, I'm the, the constant that doesn't move or change. You know, everything else is moving and changing, you know, in that sense, being aware. Uh, anyway, my heartfelt thanks out to everyone. Well, happy to see you, Bruce. Yeah. Happy and welcome back on Having Never Left. <laughs> I just want, I'm, I'm all going a lot slower. AKA at any moment, you know. <laughs> I, can, I can sympathize with that, yes. And my feeling for others who, you know, have been near their end and reach out through this Zoom, say. Um, my thoughts go and, you know, heart goes out to all those um, that may feel a little in the desert, you know, for a while. Um, yeah, it's funny, like the humor is that, you know, you can see the humor in it, you know, the value, you know, but that's all out there too. You know, nothing is other than awareness. And you allow this to to surface in me, I'll say, I'll say, you allow, you and, the, and others allow this to surface. Um, but it, it's like, it's so, so perfectly set up, you know, the joy in, in it, that one can't exist without the other, you know, the duality and the non-duality, like there's no, it's not one or the other anymore. You know, you know, you know what I mean. But anyway, thanks again so much for allowing me to share with you all. You're welcome, Bruce. Yes. I thought I was, I thought I was not coming back. <laughs> well, let's we'll see what happens. I yes. like the YouTube thing. You've been caught in Indra's net. Remember. <laughs> Well, the yes. spider, then the spider eats its web and uses it again. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, Bruce. I Keep, hope you, yeah. Keeps the spin going. All right. Bye-bye, yes. everyone. See you, brother. Bye-bye, Paul. Anyone else there, Kerry? I don't see any hands, but I got, I, I, I'm feeling something. I'm feeling it may be time for uh, Craig May to, check in i don't know if i'm dressed for uh craig's corner but we'll see whatever yes craig come on in if you like what you were speaking about at the beginning of the meeting paul about the verbing versus the now well the, the non-existence of the now 
Um, the other day, it was a Sunday afternoon and I just, I got home out of shower and I just settled down for the afternoon. And um, ever since I was a kid, I've followed the football, um, the Australian rules football. Um, and I've lost interest recently, but I still have a connection to a certain team. So I like when they're on the television, I like to watch them play. They weren't playing this particular day, but I settled down. I thought, I'll, I'll, on a Sunday afternoon, they have a, a game on free-to-air television. And I thought, I'll, I'll turn the footy on, watch the footy today. So I turn, it, I turn it on and I watch, and I turn the sound down. I don't listen to the sound. I just watch the game. And um, it was really, you know, this thing, no one loses anything or regains anything, but it's like you regain your childhood innocence. And when I was watching the game of football, I was just lost in the, um, the spectacle of it. Just the colours of the teams and the crowd and the stadium. It wasn't about the, the players, you know, like the, 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 the individual players. Were, you know, even though Craig knew some of the players, but when I was watching it, that wasn't registering at all. It was just verbing. It was just stuff happening. And I was just sitting there in bliss, watch it, uh, just awash in, the, um, in what was happening. And, and I, I was in awe. <laughs> I was in awe. The colours of the teams, the crowd, the stadium, everything that was going on, I was just lost in it. And I think... That says in the Course of Miracles that um, all God's children are innocent. It's that innocence that comes back, it seems to come back online. It's not coming back online because it's never gone anywhere, but within time, it can seem like you reclaim your child's innocence. You see the wonder in everything, the awe, and you're in awe of things. There's wonder and awe there. And, it's in that little little zone of not knowing. You, you don't know anything because you're not referring to the head. The head's out of the picture. So you're just responding to what's happening. And what's happening is just shit's happening. That's all. It's just stuff happening. And we're the observation of that. And I find at times that this just beautiful, there's just, um, it's just, um, Awesome, you know, there's awe there <laughs> and just the most little things. It can be the most mundane thing. The other day I was upstairs and, at, and I was bringing the um, clothes in off the line and uh, the sun, it was beautiful. The sun was out, quite chilly, but the sun was out. So I grabbed, the, I grabbed the ironing board and I took it outside and I was folding the clothes up on the ironing board outside with the sun on my back. And it was just beautiful. I was just lost, completely lost in the mundane task of folding up clothes. <laughs> it was blissful. And it, I could hear, I was, it was like what I was, what I was hearing. I could hear the traffic out the front here. I could hear some birds, but it was like all the sound was appearing within what I am. That's the, all the sounds were appearing within what I am. It's not like, you know, we think we're these little individuals that are looking out upon the world. But the world's appearing and happening within what we are. It's us. It's all us. Everything. It's just beautiful, you know. It's just beautiful. I don't know It's just beautiful when there's no, like no no nouns. <laughs> when there's no nouns around, it's like watching a, a picture being painted, and we're the canvas. And every night when we go to sleep, the canvas reappears as a blank canvas. And then we get painted again the next day. It's, 
the, the, yeah, the beauty, the beauty that's on offer, it's just, um, it just fucking knocks me out. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> I wasn't planning on sharing, but Kerry wrote me in there. I know. Kerry's a trickster. You gotta yeah. watch out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Kerry uh, got a little coyote in, in him. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Craig, That's thank good. you. I wasn't thinking on going to Craig's Corner either tonight. So now, yeah, so uh, yeah. I'll have to, I'm just going to dwell on albino bees in the head. Yes. Yeah, wow. I hope I get to see one of them. I'm going to picture them for a while. You know, I love bees so much. Up in the, up in the deck, but um, it's not this time of year, winter, but when the, in the spring, when the flowers are out, there's bees up there. So I go up there and have my breakfast every morning. And I just sit there with the bees and watch them, watch them go into the cups and come out of the cups and into the cups. And around. I just love them. I love watching them do their thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, bro. Yeah, man. Great to see you. Always good to see you, Craig. I'm happy. Uh, we had the silent Craig for months and now we have the, the vocal Craig. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I think we'll, we'll keep him in Craig's corner. Yeah. Just doing this. Yeah. yeah. We're going to, I think I'm going to put a new lock on it, if you don't mind. Yeah. It's just, no, no, uh, no. I want to feel like I have more control about Craig's corner. It keeps getting <laughs> sprung on me. And uh, yeah. That would be good, bro. I really care about you, Craig, and everyone else, really. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. I like, uh, you know, this Zoom little community can feed you on a lot of levels. So that's quite nice. I know when I leave the meeting that I don't leave alone. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It's very, it's uh, very touching. I've seen a lot of faces change, the physical structure of the face, yeah. which is really cool to me. Uh, yeah. All right. Thanks, bro. And uh, Harry. Yo, yo, I don't see any hands. All right. I think we're going to call it a day, eh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's uh, Amelia's birthday, so. Yeah, yeah, happy birthday, Amelia. I showered her with presents today. <laughs> yeah. we, we found some amazing things. We got some incredible coat that, uh, yeah. yeah. Paul, are you cooking dinner for her? I'm not cooking dinner for her, no. No. <laughs> No, I'm not doing that. No, I don't think that would be a present for her, really. But uh, Mike, I hope you feel better and uh, or not feel better, whatever, with that thing. Harry, as always, thank you. Yes. David, down under. John, the albino beekeeper. <laughs> Richard H, always nice to see Richard when I go up there. We're gonna have a meeting at the house this weekend. Uh, it's, some people from around the country are coming and anyone is welcome if you just get in touch with us, yeah? And we'll have the, the regular meetings at one and on the site, our, our address is there. So if you're around and you wanna come down uh, for satsang, we're gonna have food and everything. So it's sort of, uh, yeah, some people from Alabama and other San Diego and stuff are coming. So, all right, let me go to Christine. I I don't know if I've met you before, Christine. If I haven't, welcome. No, we we've met. I'm 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 kind of I've seen you in a number of locations, and oh, uh, great. Zooms. I'm I'm sort of drop back in for tune-ups occasionally. Oh, great, great. <laughs> Good to see you. Yes, yes. Sherry, I'll be seeing you shortly. That'll be nice. Yep. Hey, uh, yeah. All right. Craig May. Thank you, Craig. Mia, as always, she'll be here. Shannon Corkery. Yeah. Nice to see Shannon. Steve in San Diego. Yeah, bro. Just uh, keep rolling around this Zoom, brother. Yeah. Yeah.
Lynn D. Nice to see Lynn. All swimmingly. Yes. We got Alan O. Alan O. There he is. I'll be seeing hopefully Alan in Sicily this year. We also are going to be having a retreat in Sicily. I think the October 3rd to the 9th, something like that. And we've got the quota met, uh, met but if anyone's interested, we can you can still come to a certain point, like in August, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Has a phone. Oh, there she is. Ari, have you gotten everything? Is it all rolling in motion? Everything's Un rolling. Maybe next week. Done. Unbeknownst to you, the new Zen Bit Slap compound is being uh, acquired. Acquired, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Olympic Peninsula. <laughs> All right, honey. Good. Nice to see you. Give me Bye. a call when you like. Yeah. Okay. Grateful, Dave. Susan W. Susanna, you can come up this week. You can do all your running and then still come up. It's not an either or. Susan K, my latte lady. I had a very good one today at a, a, a Valiant. I think it was called Valiant Coffee from Brooklyn at a nice a little, how I picture most cafes, like a hole in a wall called Compton on Fillmore in San Francisco. That was a very strong little brew. Grateful Dave. Yep, got him. Susan K. Let me see. I think I have everybody. Uh, if I missed you, I didn't miss you. you know. So uh, we'll see each other, I hope, soon. We'll be here tomorrow for the 1030 uh, Pacific Time Recovery Meeting. And then we have the Saturday at 1 p.m. Pacific, the Zoom will happen and we'll also have live. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.